Hello guys, it's the Disco Bitch here. Uh, I, I just got home from work, I've got massive sweat stains on my shirt, I look like I've been toiling a field in rural India. So, uh, for those who have been watching, I'm gonna keep with the trends and I'm gonna review another book on the International Booker List. Uh, there's 13 there, this is number 5 on my channel. Uh, and this was the one that made me realize, wow, maybe I don't have to do this. <laughs> and the book we're going to talk about today is called Paya by Perumo... Perumal Murugan. This book follows um, two Indian characters um, who have recently wed um, in, a, in, a, in a faraway village and they move back to the village belonging to the, the husband and because the woman is from a different caste to the village that the brother grew up in, uh, they meet all kinds of resentment and microaggressions and eventually violence. This book really pissed me off, but I think it pissed me off in a way that I, I, I don't necessarily have to attribute to the author, um, although there are some things that are definitely his fault. So the premise of the book is that, again, these characters move back to a village and they have this rather picture-perfect relationship that we see in flashbacks, and then once they get back to the village, um, a lot of people, especially the husband's mother, uh, get really pissed at them because she's from a different caste and she has slightly whiter skin. And the book is uh, exploring the concept of caste uh, and how it's kind of a, a, a weak world idea and it, and it crumbles before love. Ah, the big themes. So I have two main points that would like my, 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 I can summarize my issues with the book into two main points that I'll go into uh, before I talk about the positives and kind of what I generally think about the book. So the two points are number one, it's, it's really poorly translated uh, and number two, it's uh, uh, almost unfathomably repetitive for how long it is. Like, like uh, actually impressive. It's actually experimental. So let's talk about the second point. The plot of the book is that the main characters they come into contact with a person, they talk to a person, and that person insults them, and then either the husband or the wife cry, and then we get a flashback to a, a nice point in their relationship, and then it happens again. Literally the second they walk in, the mother walks over and starts beating the shit out of the husband the second they walk in the village, like, you've married someone of a different case, how the fuck dare you, that's very bad. Uh, and I was like, yep, that, that's an interesting reaction, I, I can't wait to learn more about this character. And the author pretends we does, but that's all the mother does, the entire book, is insult either the husband or the wife. She has a little depth that the book kind of goes into. She has like a kind of backstory, like a sad backstory. She had to raise her, her, her only male child alone. But a lot of that gets lost because all she does is just call the husband um, a loser and the wife a cunt. I have one son only, one son to continue my family line. After destroying his life and burying him alive, here she stands on top of his grave, lush like the Eruku shrub. I cannot bear to look at this plant. Oh god, how can I uproot it? So a lot of the book is quite sort of flowerly written like that. It's got, it's, it's very interesting sort of insults, but that is all the book is, is just insults and that's the way that the author shows Caste. Until the end where there's a moment of violence where they try to burn down a bush that the wife is hiding in. That's a spoiler, I'm afraid. Um, but, but, you know, like, it, it's not, it's not a book that you read for like, oh, I wonder where this is going, even though that was how I thought it was going to be going into it. But by about page 50 or 60 or so, I was like, wow, fuck, this is an absolute rut that this book is, has stuck itself into. They go to the mum and the mum insults them. Then they go out to the, to the town and, and the uncle of the husband insults them and like kicks a plate out of his hand. And it's just on and on. And I, I get that that might be to show how, how it fucking grinds you down. Um, like how, how, how the, the case system, however pointless it may be um, and however much it may have divided India, um, but again, I, I don't know much about that. How much it grinds an individual down, or a couple down, um, and I get that, but there's literally no change in anybody's perspective or reactions throughout the whole book. That's, a, I guess, a better way of putting it, is that it's, it's repetitive, but also the characters are agentless. They have no agency. I am so fucking sick of books like A Little Life that that the characters undergo trauma, but because they, for whatever reason, have no agency, because the writer is incapable of writing sensible characters, they never try to better their situation. So these characters, they, there's one point where they move to another town and the wife is like, wow, we could totally move here. And I'm like, yes, you could. Why haven't you? Why are you sitting here dealing with these insults? And I think there was some mention to the idea that the husband has some money that the mother owns legally and he can't get it off her or something like that. But a lot of the time, a scene will happen where the mother will insult 
the wife, and instead of the wife doing anything, she'll just cry. All she'll do is cry. All she does is- there's buckets of tears. I can't believe how much crying there is in this book. I could do a fucking, like, TikTok montage of every time there's, like, the wife cries or the husband cries, and it's insufferable. I need characters. I would want to show how shit the case system is and how bad it is by seeing sensible characters ground down by it. Not weak-willed characters with no agency walking into it already ground down and then just crying. You can tell that the author comes from a position that, that knows the area, though you can tell that he knows what he's talking about. There's a lot of specific references. I like the little differences that exist um, with the main woman, how she pleats her skirt at the front instead of the back and that's a way of showing the case. But for a lot of people, it's actually quite invisible. There's not there's no real difference between the two So I like the idea that, that the case system is kind of only manifest in like sort of small social changes and not not necessarily skin color Although again, I, I can't speak to that. I don't I don't know that much, but the author was doing a good job of um, Explaining the case system to me in kind of basic terms like I understood what it meant I understood why the village were acting like that kind of um, and yeah stuff like that I got but it felt really sort of debased. The concept did not feel like it could have been... It, like, it, it, didn't, it didn't feel like it was at its fullest potential. It didn't feel like it was explored as fully as I wanted to be. I refer to something like Ninth Building, which is like... The first half of that book is like the cultural revolution in the city, and then the second half is the cultural revolution in the country, and the lack of the cultural revolution in the country is itself a commentary on the cultural revolution. I have warmed to that book a little bit. Um, it's, it's now just a solid 8 instead of like a 7 and an 8, but regardless. What I mean is that this book puts these characters in one single situation the whole time, and that situation does not change until the end, where the main woman nearly gets smoked out. That's it. it the 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 Problems with case, the concept of it, are not explored beyond the the idea of insults and like microaggressions and then occasionally worse insults. That's it. That's all it means to these characters. That's all it meant. And they, some of them, I like the idea that the husband kind of knew that going into it and, and that the wife was a little bit unaware and kind of naive about it. But fuck man, it's like, it's, that's all it is. And the two main characters, they never even think to argue. Well, the husband does once, but they never think to like try to better themselves, or leave the town, or argue back, or try to state their case. The husband does that once to his mother, and that's the best scene in the book, even though it's, um, the writing still sounds like the author just because of the dialogue, or the translator, which we'll get to. But that's the best scene in the book, because you start to see how the characters think, and before that you don't see how the characters think. All they do is, oh, I've got to insult this woman, but that doesn't, like, is that it? Is that all, is that all this case issue is? Cause I'm- I'm a- I'm a dumb westerner, I don't know any more about it. I feel like how a fucking- how like a, an art house foreign director, like Lav Diaz or someone like that, I feel like how he must have felt when he watched Joker for the first time. Like, is that it? Is that all the west is? <laughs> yeah, there's a million solutions to- to the problem at the core of the book. And I hate when characters have a lack of agency to explore that. Because I would want to see not only how contemptible and bad the case system is, but also how hopeless it is. And we don't get that. I feel like if I was in this situation, I would be having a significantly different reaction. And maybe that's because I don't grow up in that society, of course, that's probably the case. But I just want to see characters who are intelligent having to go through these things. Willingly, like they have will to them. Um, and this did not feel like that at all. This felt like Oh, what the fuck do we do? How, how would a character react to this? I think they would cry and lock themselves in their room. And I'm like, fuck, like, do something better. Yeah, there's a couple of things this book does, even in content, because again, we're gonna get to the translation, but even in content, there's a few things this book does that just pissed me off. Soroya always wondered if the mother's abusive rants and litanies were a way to channel her anxiety. After all, Marai had never lived anywhere else. She had come to the rock when she was 20 and had been here ever since, raising her only son. Her morality was her only shield. Perhaps she now feared that her son has compromised it. And the 20 pages before that, if I remember right, was an anecdote that showed this. And then the wife character, who somehow is intelligent enough to note the very intricate psychologies of people, but is unwilling to better their situation, she notes all this, even though we've already seen it. So I know there's the issue of like, tell don't show, or, or show don't tell. 
I have never seen show then tell. That's not something I'm aware of. Everything before the village excommunicated them and it kind of ramped up a little bit um, was bad. So so the, the first 60% of the book is like kind of insufferable and then it does get a little better by the end. To be fair, it gets, it, it moves a little faster. There's a couple more scenes that stood with me more like the scene where they visit another town and the the wife starts crying again uh, because she realizes, oh fuck, like I, this is another life that I could live where caste isn't an issue and, and life is very straightforward. But the 60% before we get there is, it gr ground me down more than the characters. So the two main women characters seemed kind of quite complex internally. They seemed like they had a lot to think about, especially the mother. Um, and it felt like there were moments where a, a, a more interesting sort of nuanced conversation could come and then it would just devolve into insults crying, insults crying again. Because of this kind of thing, the concept that I had in my head of Cased was you get insulted, you don't leave because the book doesn't allow you to leave, and then people try to kill you. That was how Cased came across in this book. It did not come across as something that had nuance or variation to it. It came across as one-sided insults. and. Again, because this is a book written for native speakers and Indian people, writing it like that is probably okay because the author doesn't have to give the basis to understand case sort of socially. So when 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 the when the when the main husband character brings home the wife, native speakers are probably already thinking, "Oh, I know how this is going to go," and then it does go that way. Um, so maybe. It, it makes more sense from that perspective, and I'll get more into why I imagine the original version of this book is like significantly better than the translation. But for me, as a person reading this, I I I was like totally cut off from the kind of like psychology of it and the sort of social repercussions of it. I feel like the mother character would be a good way to explore the weaknesses of the case system in like a moral sense. But all she does is just call the main woman a bitch and then the main woman cries and runs off. And it felt like the author didn't want to evolve on the premise or didn't feel like he had to. The book makes its point and then it never shuts the fuck up about it. I do think it's better than The Gospel According to the New World, uh, which is another one on the short list that I reviewed, because at least this book does indeed have a point and it has characters that are humans in it, um, which cannot be said for that book, of course, uh, The Gospel According to the New World. That, that barely counts as a book, I think. The characters' agency are based entirely around when they can next complain to someone or when they next get insulted or insult someone else. It, it was just, it, I, I was not a fan. I was really not a fan, as you could tell. Sorry if I seem worked up. I, I get the feeling this might be a bit of a controversial opinion. And again, as, as with a, a lot of the books on the, on the list, it seems like people are generally liking this one or thinking it's like, okay, as opposed to The Gospel According to the New World where I have only heard hate. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this book seems like people are, are, are enjoying it and getting a lot out of it and I'm glad that they are but I there were just there were just certain pitfalls that were hitting me with this book and that re that kind of um repetitive structure of it was the main one now we move on to the second point I made earlier which is that I I think it's a bad translation and I'll explain why. I will use figure one, which is the translator's notes at the end of the book, which nearly made me lose my mind. Here's a quote. In the Tamil text, Perumal Murugan employs a narrative style in which repetitions of phrases or words for the sake of emphasis and small abrupt shifts back and forth in time without explicit discourse markers are very common. These are aspects of narration that native speakers are perhaps accustomed to. Fair enough. That the, the way that Indian is perhaps written or spoken is slightly different and jumps back and forward in time are commonplace in that literature. Fair enough. Then, the translator goes on to say, but in my translation to English, these sounded unclear and a little confusing. So even the translator is like, sorry, whoops, I fucked up. Oopsie, teehee, I, I made a shit translation, sorry about that. What the fuck? This, I read this on the train and I read that note and I, I fucking scream laughed and I got some looks because I was like, how could the translator himself admit that he's written a bad translation. Like, that's, that's fucking crazy to me that he's just like, yeah, I made it sound unclear and I didn't do a good job, sorry. This implies that the original version of the book is better and is more purposeful in its word choices and, uh, and doesn't have a translator that's going, oops, sorry, I did a boo-boo, sorry. And yeah, those, those aspects that the translator is commenting on, those changes back and forth in time without discourse markers, I was able to follow those just fine. They weren't an issue, but they did feel like they were out of place at points and they felt like they were interrupting with the flow of the book. I had no problem with pointing them out or knowing that they existed. Um, but yeah, for example, at the ending, 
the ending, which is quite a fast-moving bit where she's running away from the villagers, and then it will randomly cut to... So, she was praying to a god, and she prayed for this god to give her this blessing, and yada yada. And it's okay for the book to do that. I almost like that idea of having a, a final chase scene, but then cutting back and forth to the, the same picture-perfect relationship that we've been cutting back and forth to the whole time, but it's like at the climactic point of the book. But the translator felt really unsure of what they were meant to be doing with that, and they felt totally unwilling to really adapt the book, or like, change the, the structure of it. And so it came across as weak and lily-livid in its translating. <laughs> there are a lot of moments where it would cut back in time to the picture-perfect relationship that I liked, and there were a lot of moments where it felt like it was doing it because the original text did it, and it didn't fit in English or in just the general writing style as it's been translated. And I feel like that's a, a, a general point to bring up with translation in general, especially considering I'm reading so many translated books for this booker, is like, I feel like translators are really unwilling to change bits of the book, or perhaps they're not legally allowed to, um, perhaps there is that kind of um, legality behind it, but it feels like they are unwilling to imprint themselves onto it, and they really should feel okay to do that. And again, this this award, the International Booker, awards the, the writer and the translator jointly. They both get the same amount of money, and they both get a little fucking statue. And if the translator himself is admitting he did a shit job, then this book should not be mentioned in the same breath as that fucking award. It should not be anywhere near it. Um, but... That means that the Booker committee themselves acknowledge that the translator has equal fucking ownership over the property now as the original writer, and that should include, in my eyes, the willingness or ability to translate for themselves. That's why something like The Gospel According to the New World is so baffling to me, is because it's translated by the writer's own fucking husband, and it's still shit. And so yeah, in this example, the, the relevance of the translator in, in the prize is important and speaks to how important translators are. They're not just people who are taking the word and changing it to English. That's why you have Google Translate. That's the point of it. What they're doing is they're changing it to continue to make it readable for a different type of audience, and this translator has fucking failed in doing that. The translator also says that this book speaks of love in the face of difference and societal violence. And it definitely does that, that's absolutely the main theme, but its resolution to that point, or its, or its keynote to that, is just make the two main characters cry. And I really found it hard to empathise with them after they did that for the 20th or 30th time. There's some, there's some good language in it, occasionally. Uh, there are some good quotes. A lot of the insults people give are very flowery and, and kind of um, ridiculous. Uh, but but it's it's well written. There are there are individual segments that are very well written. Again, I like the cutting back to a picture perfect relationship. I like doing that, even if it sometimes happens at weird points. Um, and for the most part, it seems that the author is passionate about it. And I would like to see a good book on this topic, but I can't say that this is it. So my apologies. But uh, to be fair, I don't think it's any anybody's fault in particular. <laughs> so I think that this is. Uh, I, this is my lock to win so far at the moment, because it's the book that I think deserves it the least. Um, and I also think that they are, they would be willing to honour an author who's written in Tamil, and because this seems like it has, like, an important social message to it, I, I could definitely see them giving this the award for sure. Uh, I think it will most certainly be on the short list. I've, I'll have a predictions video that comes out just before, and Pyre, I think, will be on there. But I did not like it, and I think I'll give it a 4 out of 10. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to, to try and cry as little as possible this week. Um, Godspeed. <laughs>